This video is about prototyping with cardboard. It's the first in a sequence. We'll start by talking about materials and tools that we can use. Cardboard is lots of different materials. This is an example of corrugated cardboard. Its uh, corrugations mean these little wavy structures that are between sandwiched between two layers. That gives the cardboard some strength without filling it up with material, which would uh, help to keep, keep it light. There's a direction. You can sort of see it on one side and a bit more so on the other side. This would be like the inside of a box, and this would be the outside with an extra layer, a little bit smoother, and um, different materials. Sometimes they can have different thicknesses. There's another material called chipboard, which is related. This is solid in the sense that there's no corrugations, there's no gap, and the material is made by layers of recycled paper that are glued together. Um, it's quite sturdy and stiff, and it comes in different thicknesses. Uh, this material is called foam core. It's a um, paper on two sides, and it's got a foam material, a synthetic material foam in between, and it's very nice for making models. It's um, very smooth. This, this, has been, um, this is actually part of an old poster. Um, someone printed on this poster, and I've recycled it. Um, it's rather expensive. Uh, but it has very nice properties and it's very uniformly thick. Uh, it has, it's pretty stiff, it's very lightweight. Um, architects like to make models with this kind of material. Uh, I personally uh, scavenge old posters when I see them uh, in the recycling room and um, use this material for some construction projects. And speaking of scavenging, you can reuse lots of materials. Here's a, here's a tablet. A paper tablet, and the back has got uh, a thin layer of chipboard in it. It's uh, quite nice. We can also use boxes that we get from um, packages that we buy, and obviously we could cut this into pieces and use it for raw material, but sometimes um, you can use it as a project box without having to do any additional fabrications. Here's an old uh, Kleenex, empty Kleenex box, and if you um, you can deconstruct it, and that has nice. It's fairly thin, um, but it's that might be a useful property. For example, if you need to make a curved surface, reuse toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls. So if you have a project where, say, you need some lightweight strengthening between two walls, this is quite quite useful. Or um, pedestals. Obviously, you can't put too much weight on it, or it'll crush it, but very, very useful bit of material. After you, you know, talk about materials, we talk about how to uh, fasten it. So uh, here's a couple rolls of uh, masking tape. This is ordinary masking tape, nice to use. Um, this is painter's tape. It's more expensive, and it has the property that it, although it's quite tacky, it f the glue is formulated so that it doesn't remove paint. So if I were to use this when I uh, was painting and I wanted to mask off an area. Uh, it's quite nice for that. It's more expensive. This is uh, less expensive and useful. Um, and then there's this Mylar uh, packing tape. I, I, use, I use the masking tapes mostly just to hold things in place as I'm doing some fabrication. And the problem with this packing tape is it's very sticky and as you pull out a piece of it, it sometimes folds on itself. So um, actually for Making prototypes, sometimes I'll use some packing tape to uh, really secure things, but it's usually uh, a little bit more trouble than it's worth uh, for general purposes. Uh, good old-fashioned school glue. Here's a variation on that called quick-dry tacky glue. It's also um, very similar in consistency. It's like a white, goopy material, and it dries a little faster. Many projects, uh, folks use uh, glue guns, hot glue guns. Hot glue tends to set a little faster. Um, the other advantage of a hot glue is that these, this material melts when it gets warm, and if you need to redo a joint that's been glued with this, you can use a, sometimes a hairdryer, but a heat gun to heat up the, the surface again, to heat up the glue again, and it gets soft again. Cutting tools are another important uh, set. I'm going to show some ideas that I don't recommend as well as some that I do. Uh, I've got an array of scissors here that are um, in my toolbox. Um, these 
just ordinary office shears can be used. Here's a slightly more heavy duty. I bought these for uh, my, my shop. They're um, thicker blade and serrated and very, very sharp. And uh, this is just because I'm a tool guy. I found these in a catalog and thought, oh, I should have these. They're very, uh, very stiff, very, very sharp, and it has a, a serrated jaw right there. Um, it turns out that for cardboard, um, I usually don't use scissors. And here's one reason why. Here's a piece of cardboard scrap here. Um, let's say I wanted to cut this way. I, it doesn't matter that what I'm going to show doesn't matter if you cut it this way or this way. But as, as I'm cutting along here, the blade, because of the way the blade operates, tends to push the cut piece down and that sometimes damages it. So if if I wanted to use this piece later, I'd have to deal with the fact that I've, I've um, damaged it. It's not a bad thing, but something to be th to, to think about. So for most cardboard projects, I don't use scissors. I use knives. I want to be careful about this. I don't use kitchen knives. This is an old paring knife that I keep in my toolbox. Uh, the problem with this is because the blade is long, it might wobble and slide off and um, we might, it's harder to control that way because the, the action is down here on the point. If I'm cutting cutting a piece of cardboard, the action is all down here, but there's this huge section of blade that's not being used to be cutting, but it also exposes me to some danger, and the blade itself is a bit more flexible because of that. So I do not recommend a kitchen knife under any circumstance. I also do not recommend box cutter. Here's a small box cutter. They're very handy. Uh, they have blades with these little uh, scores in them that allows you to break the blade. So this this one has been used quite a bit. Probably I should probably break this off, but it's um, handy in a heavy duty work environment. If you have some pliers, you can get the pliers on here and snap off, and then you have a sharp point. The problem is that if I'm cutting and I'm pushing on this, even if it's fully retracted, the pushing motion. If I'm pushing too hard, which I don't recommend, you could snap that blade. That is a hazard because the blade might actually fly up and injure you. The other piece is that because this indexing mechanism has so many positions and it's not really all that secure, it's possible that while cutting you could you know, accidentally push on that, make the blade eject, etc. So I don't recommend box cutters. This is my tool of choice for basic cardboard craft work. It's a heavy duty utility knife. I use it for all sorts of construction projects. Uh, it's got a big heavy handle and it has these uh, blades that only extend about an inch. And in fact, there's a little index here that I could use less than an inch. So if I want to cut here, only the tip that is doing the cutting is exposed and the blade itself is quite thick and stiff. Uh, you can get um, replacement blades here uh, and you can see that uh, they are trapezoidal in shape. There's a little notches here to lock into the indexing mechanism. You use a screwdriver, take it apart. In fact, there's uh, spare blades in the handle, which makes it uh, a handy tool. Um, there are additionally craft knives. This is um, Exacto brand. This um, has a blade that can be replaced by twisting this, uh, this knurled handle, and then I can pull out the blade here and replace it as it gets dull, which is a good feature in a, in a, in a craft knife that you can uh, get a sharp blade right away. Um, this is nice for precise work. Uh, it's got a very much uh, po you know, pointier point that could be handy, but it's also a little less rugged than my friend the utility knife. Here's a, an alternative version of that from Fiskars. It's super fancy, actually. It's got a um, same kind of blade. It's got a nice contoured handle, so if you had to do a lot of cutting all day, and this mechanism in the back here allows you to release the tension on the blade and, and change it. Um, I bought this some time ago thinking I'd use it, and I really don't. Finally, for cutting cardboard, this is a really nice tool. It's called a canary. It's made in Japan. Uh, there's a variation on this that I've seen in some cardboard um, project kits, but this is a, a wonderful knife. It looks rather ordinary. It's got a roundy tip, and the blade is sharp, but it's not. I mean, if I had done that with this uh, utility knife, I would have cut myself. And I can even run this along my hand. The, the serrations are set up so that they, uh, the sharpness is recessed. But I can do all sorts of really fast cuts with this. 
And what this is useful for, obviously I'm doing a very rough job of it, but what this is useful for is if you have a box and you need to, say, cut a hole in it, a large, a large box, or do some quick shaping. So my uh, nice tools of choice would be the canary for doing rough cuts and the utility knife for doing precision cuts. You know, you don't need a whole set of knives, but I wanted to show you uh, what po tools are uh, possibly useful. Finally, uh, we need to protect our work surface as we're thinking about cutting. Uh, this is a, um, a cutting mat. It's made for that purpose. It's got a, uh, it's got a thickness that um, has some material in it that will absorb the cutting and will, uh, it's called self-healing. Um, the, the cuts uh, tend to not get bigger over time. Um, it's brand new. I haven't used it. It's actually two-sided, but um, it's handy because it's got a, a grid on it. It's not absolutely necessary that you go out and spend money on that. In fact, if you were to take, depending on the size of your project, if you were to take this type of tablet with a thick backing, that could be a really good cutting board because it's just cards, um, chipboard, and that's useful. And you can see on the back here, I've actually used this piece of chipboard, which was part of a much larger sheet, uh, as, a, as a little cutting mat. Finally, I have uh, a ratty old kitchen cutting board that... Um, has seen better days in the kitchen, but uh, once it got sort of worn quite a bit and dirty, I moved it down to my my, my little shop area. And um, so this is also useful as a cutting. The key is it's flat and I won't damage the surface underneath when I'm cutting on this. We want to be able to cut with some precision, so we want to be able to measure uh, one of the best measuring tools is a simple metal ruler. Uh, you don't need to get this particular brand. Uh, this is nice and thick, but it's handy, a couple sizes. Uh, very handy for making measurements and for cutting as a straight edge. So later I'll demonstrate that we cut along this as a straight line. This simple um, square is also quite useful. The square has the added advantage that it can be used as a, a template. So if I were to fabricate a right angle and I wanted to make sure it was right angle, I would be able to use my, my square and I'd see, oh, this is not quite square, but very handy. Um, finally, we can also just use the material itself as a guide. Let's say that I wanted to make this joint, which I'll show you how to make later, by cutting a little edge off of one of these pieces. And I wanted to stack them like this, but not as a butt, but making a little groove in there. So I could take my straight edge I use this size a little better. Take my straight edge and I line up the material and use my finger on the other reverse side here to make them square or flush. I push my straight edge up against it and now I've measured the thickness of the cut that I would need to make along this. And I, later you'll see how I don't cut all the way through. But I don't need to measure this as some number of millimeters or fractions of an inch. I just use the material itself as my guide. That's it for materials tools. Um, we'll follow up with another video on technique.